This land is super flat, obviously. But if we were to dig about 150 feet beneath here, or 46 meters, we would discover the remains of a completely different landscape, a much more ancient one, which once existed on the surface level, dominating the land here, and it did so for well over 400 million years, before it only just became covered up in this specific area within the past few million years after a new wave of volcanism began in Australia, which would go on to release voluminous amounts of fast-flowing lava that solidified into the rock known as basalt when it cooled. Before it solidified, though, these lava flows poured into the nearby ravines and river systems near to the many thousands of volcanic vents that were ultimately responsible for its release. And it would very perfectly mould into the shape of the river, building up the depressed waterway and diverting future flows and the lava flows themselves could travel for many kilometers before finally coming to a rest, allowing it to cover vast distances within a river in a single eruption. And the result of this? The entire inland watercourse in central and western Victoria has been altered. The literal arteries of the land have been covered over, and new ones have been forced to take its place, so to speak. And this is evidenced by the rocks in this weird hill here. This weird looking hill has a fascinating origin story behind it, and we're going to cover that in this video. This hill-like stack of debris and sedimentary rubble is known as a deep lead mullock heap, and it sticks out like a sore thumb amongst an otherwise flat land. But what is it, you ask? Well, all of the material that you see here was pulled out of the aforementioned ancient and now buried landscape that I just spoke of by hand by miners who dug deep shafts in an attempt to intersect the primordial rivers and tributaries that once flowed through here, which were now lying buried beneath the many layers of differing lava flows that were recently extruded here. Some areas were covered deep, and others were more shallow. These lava flows would be erupted en masse, and they would flow, and eventually solidify, in thin veneers, slowly building areas up over time, layer by layer. You can find many of these protruding and strange hill-like shapes pretty much everywhere in areas of Victoria that have the occurrence of buried gold-rich paleo rivers, which is the correct term to describe this kind of ancient river system. But in Victoria, we call them deep leads, and deep leads play a big part in our state's history. I'm fascinated by deep leads, and I don't really know why. It's not so much the massive yields of gold associated with them, it's something to do with, I don't know, things that are ancient. Like I spend 1% of my time actually imagining the gold and nuggets contained within them, and 99% of my time just wondering how Victoria looked prior to it being covered over by these lava flows. And something about that intrigues me so much that it's a borderline obsession at this point. Now it's safe to say that this kind of mining absolutely sucked. Like wow, it was horrible but it was well worth it for the riches that lay within these primordial waterways. And I love coming to these mullock heaps because they exist within land that is very clearly flattened and is therefore dominated by recently extruded volcanic material. But the fact that these piles exist both offer an insight and prove that these ancient rivers even exist at all to begin with, in case someone was, for whatever reason, skeptical. But they can also show us the direction that whatever ancient river these miners were chasing once flowed, when multiple of these massive deep lead heaps can be lined up in the distance and seen by the naked eye, which I think is pretty cool. So the pile of sedimentary rocks that you see here were, pre-7 million years ago, at what was then the surface level of Victoria, where they were pulled out from the now deep ground alongside the much sought after river gravels which were worn down and rounded from thousands of years of river action, within which precious gold could be found, en masse, snugly lying within a matrix of material that was dominated by the many cobbles of river rocks that existed alongside quartz boulders of varying sizes, from small to exceptionally large. But the mine that left this mullock heap here pulled it from a depth of between 100 to 200 feet, or 30 to 60 meters. And this is actually pretty shallow, amazingly enough, compared to many other places that would have to dig 200 or 300 feet, or 60 to 91 meters or more, to get the job done. 
So there was once a completely different river system that snaked its way through whatever land ancient Victoria existed as. And the arteries of it can be clearly seen by tracing the deep lead workings that occurred here, and that were marked by the Geological Survey of Victoria. Though spotty, when you follow these lines you can see that the river system prior to the present day Yarrowee River in Ballarat, which in present day flows south, once flowed north, where it zigzagged its way through hundreds of kilometres before finally reaching the Murray River. It did so when the topography here was 50 to 60 metres lower than what it became after these lava flows filled up the ancient ravines that dominated this once rugged and far more mountainous land. But in present day, the Yarrowee, which took over as the dominant waterway here after the recent lava flows buried the rivers that preceded it, now flows out towards Geelong, and this is obviously a major shift. For millions of years the waterways of Western Victoria remained largely intact and unchanged owing to the fact that it became pretty geologically stable after the 300 million year mark. At least it did in this part of the land. In fact, it might well be speculated that for well over 300 million years, this had more or less been the pathway that this river system took, showing you why these deep leads were so bountiful and saturated in precious metals, and why they contained more gold than the recently constructed alluvial water bodies that took over post-volcanism. But there's another thing worth stating that will be particularly interesting for anyone who's from Victoria and who lives in this area around the central highlands or in the volcanic plains to the west of Melbourne. And that's the fact that this area was, at least before the recent lava flows, 30 to 50 metres lower than what it currently is. Imagine viewing Black Hill but from 50 metres lower. Imagine how different Ballarat would look if the western parts of it were 50 metres lower. How everything would look. Especially the mountains both in Alertadurg National Park and to the west of it. They'd be striking. I mean, they already are, but if they were 30 to 50 metres taller, they'd be monsters in comparison to their present day appearance. And this is how they stood for almost all of our history, until those damn pesky volcanoes reared their molten heads and changed the land. At least until erosion finally does its thing and reverses their impact. Hurry up erosion you son of a bitch. So this is the story of only one of many of the deep lead heaps that exist in Victoria. I know that recently a lot of content has been centred around the Ballarat district, and they have been for a good reason, as I attempted to get as much footage of the area as possible before making my recent move. After this wave of videos, expect episodes to be centred around Eastern Victoria and Melbourne. As the next journey of discovery begins, and as I attempt to answer some burning questions that I've had for years, while simultaneously heading back to the city that I grew up in after spending years out in the bush staring at rocks. Thanks for watching. And that isn't a joke. I was staring at rocks. I love staring at rocks, man.